Gold Star, Tuaka Rask has been on a hell of a run with a 1-5-0-2 record over his last 17 games, and the latest was also one of his best. Rask stopped 20 shots in the first period as the Bruins really didn't have their best legs, and then he made some of his best saves in the third period protecting a one-goal lead, including a stop on a Damon Severson breakaway late in the game. In all Rask stopped 37 of 39 shots and really became a Finnish brick wall whenever the Devils began ratcheting up the attack in a game where the Bruins clearly weren't at their best. Rask hasn't been quite as dominant in the month of January with a .913 save percentage for the month even after his stellar work against New Jersey, but he's going into the All-Star break playing some of his best hockey. Black Eye, yes but Brat has been pretty strong for the Devils as a rookie this, but he did not have a very good game for New Jersey this time around. Brat finished with a minus 2 in 14.59 of ice time and had zero shots on net as the Devils fired 39 total shots at Tuaka Rask. Brat certainly wasn't alone in having a subpar game for New Jersey, but it's expected the players like him would need to step up with Taylor Hall injured and out of the lineup. It didn't happen for Brat and the Devils on Tuesday, and subsequently New Jersey skates out of Boston empty-handed after starting the game like a hockey house of fire. Turning point, the turning point for the Bruins was getting a 5-on-3 power play after Miles Wood had a meltdown and took two separate penalties for cross-checking and interference on a retaliatory hit on Riley Nash. That landed Wood in the box for four minutes and Marcus Johansson followed right afterward with a tripping call. The Bruins subsequently enjoyed two minutes of 5-on-3 hockey and Patrice Bergeron cashed in on a goal that tied the game in the second period immediately ushered in a 13-minute delay as the TD Garden scoreboard went haywire, and the Bruins never trailed again in the rest of the game. It was a true moment where the Bruins had a chance to force EC's control of the game, and that's exactly what they did. Honorable mention, Brad Marchand wasn't at his best but he factored into the game on many different levels while also notching the game winner for the Bruins. It was his breakaway in the second period where he completely decked out Corey Schneider and then flipped a puck over him for the slick, easy-looking score for his team leading 21st goal of the March and finished with a goal, two points and four shots on net in 20.06 of ice time, and had a couple of takeaways along the way as well. Unfortunately March and also caught Marcus Johansson with an elbow in the third period that went uncalled on the ice, but could end up resulting in supplementary discipline with the league. By the numbers, 1-3-0 for the Bruins' record during their 17-game point streak that dates all the way back to the last regulation loss on deck. 14, and is tied for the third longest stretch in team history along with 17 gamers in 1929-30, 1977-78 and 1982-83. Quote to note, I thought Tuaka was our best player. Bruce Cassidy, on his goalie making 37 saves in the 3-2 win for the black and gold Boston, Mass. There was a point much earlier in the when it seemed that Tuaka Rask simply couldn't win a game, and now it's a reality that the Bruins know. One goaltender simply can't lose. Rask stopped 37 shots including a show-stopping 20 saves in the first period en route to a Bruins 3-2 win over the New Jersey Devils at TD Garden on Tuesday night. Rask extended his unbeaten streak to 17 games with a 1-5-0-2 record and truly helped the black and gold steal a game they probably didn't deserve against a New Jersey team that was desperate for the two points. He was also at his best early and late with the 20 saves in the first period as the Bruins got their footing, and another 12 stops in the third period including a stonewall job on a Damon Severson breakaway while protecting a slim one-goal lead. For a goalie that is often accused of not stealing enough games for his team, Rask was guilty of grand larceny hockey game versus the Devils in the best way possible. I think the quality saves were more happening late in the game. I think early on there was a lot of volume of shots. I think their game plan was clearly to funnel everything to the net and see what happens. Sometimes you can't let the shot clock dictate how you are playing because I thought we had some good looks from the slot, said Bruce Cassidy. They clearly had better puck possession than us, and that was the issue. Sooner or later when you start funneling pucks to the net, bad things happen for us, penalties, bounces, deflections, and that's what happened, obviously, on their first goal. So that was a concern, but I thought Tuaka was our best player. Clearly Cassidy has a point as the Devils' chances early were largely from the perimeter in the first period with the slot getting well protected by the Bruins' defense, but they were much higher quality late in the game as things broke down a little bit.
Either way, Rask admitted he was pushed into battling a little bit more against the devils based on the heavy traffic in front, and the odd angles that shots were coming at him fast and furiously. It's tough, but you just try to stay compact and behind the puck. There were a lot of shots that they took from bad angles and I couldn't control the rebounds, admitted Rask. It was just one of those nights that the puck doesn't really stick to you as much as usual. You would like it to but then you just have to battle and make the rebound saves. Today, I think we had to defend a lot compared to the last few weeks but there were a lot of rebounds and they took care of them. I think we were really good at getting the puck out of our own zone, wheeling with the puck and finding the open guy with a breakout. The guys did a great job. Rask is also doing a good job with a .923 save percentage and 2.16 goals against average that continues to improve game after game, and more importantly the wins that keep stacking on top of each other for a goalie that's answered. The challenge from earlier in the Boston, about the only thing that could slow down the Bruins' scalding hot perfection line, Brad Marchand, Patrice Bergeron, David Pasnak, is injuries or a suspension, and they may have to deal with one of those in the short term. The NHL Department of Player Safety is reviewing a Brad March and elbow to the head of Marcus Johansson in the third period of Tuesday night's 3-2 win over the New Jersey Devils, per a source. There was no penalty called on the players both Johansson and March and converged on the net just as the B's left winger was firing a shot, but replays showed that March and caught the Devils forward with an elbow to the side of the head just as he was hurtling down to the ice. Johansson was down for an extended period and had to be helped back to the New Jersey dressing room following the play, and he didn't return to the game after the incident with Marchand. Perhaps Marchand had his elbows raised in self-defense as he felt a Devils player approaching him from behind or he was simply trying to avoid crashing into the Devils goalie, but the replay showed clear, hard contact to the side of Johansson's head. The Bruins winger said after the game that he wasn't sure exactly what happened, but hoped that Johansson was going to be okay after going down. What happened? I don't know, he got hurt. I don't know what happened, I have no idea what happened, said Marchand, who finished with a goal and two points in 20.06 of ice time. I took a shot and I tumbled down and he was hurt. So I don't know what happened there, but hope he he's okay. Marchand has gotten off pretty easily in a couple of instances when he's been in the crosshairs of player safety recently with a $10,000 fine last year on a tripping play with Nicholas Cronwall, and no supplemental discipline on a high hit on John Tavares that earned him a five-minute major penalty. Marchand was suspended just ahead of the playoffs last for a spearing incident with Jake Dotchen, but he'd managed to avoid any further trouble with a long arm of the NHL law thus far this year but his past history with the league's disciplinarians isn't going to work in his favor as much and has been fined or suspended seven previous times, so by all accounts he's viewed as a repeat offender by the NHL.